so my story starts, um, wow. maybe I was at the epitome of my career, if you could call it that. Um, I was running a program called My Skills for Africa at Microsoft, which I had spent building for the last, for three years. Um, it was one of those programs that, you know, um, you build from Africa. If you work for a multinational company, you barely build anything from the region. So this was a, an amazing opportunity for me to be able to, you know, contribute from Africa, by Africans, supporting Africans. And for me, that was, you know, great. Um, but one night I get home and I was dissatisfied. Um, I, I had gotten awards, I had gotten, you know, any kind of accolades that you would get when, you know, you've done a good job, um, but I was dissatisfied. And I wasn't sure why. Was it because I was unmarried? Maybe because I didn't have children? <laughs> was it because, um, you know, uh, I don't know, didn't have the greatest of friends, which I did. And so, you know, interesting enough, when you work for a company like Microsoft, everyone becomes your friend. And so it becomes very easy to make friends. When you say Microsoft, you're like, hey, Microsoft. And so it becomes an easy way to make friends. But I was not happy. Um, and so I got from home. I mean, I got home. And I just looked at my house, which I'm an interior. I love interior design. So it's a beautiful home. But it was empty. Um, and so I started crying. And I was like, why? Why you have every, everything that life can offer. So why are you crying? And that off started off a journey of really looking inside and really trying to figure out well, how did I end up here and why was I not happy with you know, what everyone would consider amazing. And um, that has led me to a journey of maybe four years. Um, and it was pretty much looking at, you know, um, how did I never appear? And a lot of it was, you know, you move from one thing to the next to the next, not necessarily thinking about it, not being intentional at all, but, you know, um, the world has a way of working. You work hard, it pays you back. And so, in essence, I could work till 2 a.m. and I was fine with that, as long as I'm able to get to where I needed to get to. Um, but that was empty. And so, so, I decided to stop everything. And so, I left my job. Um, I gave up a whole lot of things from my life and I decided to sit and listen. And a lot of people, you know, uh, thought I was crazy because why would you leave a good job? Why would you decide to, you know, let go of nice things to be able to, you know, figure out what is it that you need and want? Um, and yeah, um, so it led to maybe a whole year of, of introspection. Um, finding out what one I was not, which is an interesting aspect of finding yourself is most of the time you actually find out what you don't want to be before you know what you need to be. And so um, there was a lot of purging that needed to happen. Um, but later on, um, you know, and I think when you leave your job, most of the time it's like you have the anxiety of showing other people that are actually up to, up to something. And so I was trying to see what can I do, what can I do with my life, um, and kind of show them that, you know, I have it all together, you know. Um, but um, for whatever reason, there was a voice inside of me telling me to just wait. Wait, sit, listen. Um, which was very unnerving. Um, but eventually, um, decided to take a trip out of town and attend, you know, a whole different kind of things in the U.S. But in that moment, that's when I really took the time to understand where I was. Um, um, and also not having the pressure of my mom asking me, what's your plan? To, uh, to just really sitting and introspecting. And, you know, I found my meaning. And my meaning was, you know, if I looked through my life, the common string was leadership. I was always passionate about building leaders, um, the programmer that I'd successfully done within Microsoft was actually building leadership skills. And so that was always something that connected all my experiences. Um, so looking back helped, but also looking forward, I was like, then what next? How do I do this? And so, um, and what do I have to offer? And most of the time when you don't have a job, you seem like you'd have nothing to offer. You know, you kind of lose that ex 
kind of that confidence that actually I can contribute to the world. And so over time, made it very clear that I wanted to pursue something in leadership, um, empower youth, uh, but also government. And that was an interesting kind of discovery for me. Um, and so I think immediately I discovered that uh, Microsoft had a position to actually be able to impact leaders across the Middle East and Africa. Um, but I can tell you that story and stop from there. But I think what has really kind of had an impact in a lot of the things that I've been able to do since then, um, that was in 2016, 2017, um, has been in terms of really kind of being able to know what your purpose is, but kind of really going into the details of what that is, uh, what is my vision and purpose and meaning, but also how do I get there? How do I create my life around that? And I think that has been, um, I think, my biggest learning from the relationships that I'm building. Um, I think relationships are one place that you can't control in terms of, you know, you never can control what people can give you, but you can control what you give to people. And I think that, in essence, has really taught me to change how I perceive people, but also how I perceive my friendships. Uh, but also in terms of making sure that, you know, if you have uh, good relationships, that means those relationships have to be aligned with your vision and your purpose. That's where you don't have to keep, you know, shifting and changing because everyone is aligned to where you're going and what you need to do. Um, but also another thing has been really um, in terms of discipline. Um, a lot of the things that are really, and we're just, last week I was attending a leadership forum, and one of the things that was interesting was um, the normal classic strengths and weaknesses. And, um, but the interesting thing about this one was there was strenuous gifts, and then there was hidden treasures. And a lot of the time we don't take the time to really know, you know, how, who am I? What is the blueprint of Winnie? And then how, what do I need to do to grow and become the person that I envision myself to be? And I think being able to really understand what those are, but also kind of continuously building on those is something that takes a whole lot of discipline. Um, it takes a whole lot of going back and working on it over and over and over again. Um, it's sad that a lot of the very few people that you refer to um, uh, as being great leaders, are the Nelson Mandela's or give me another one. Obama. That's it. Really? <laughs> right, that's it. <laughs> Oprah. You know, so you can see they're very few. Very few. Um, because they paid the price, whatever that was. If you think about uh, Martin Luther King, he was willing to die die for what he believed in. If you look at Nelson Mandela, you know, he paid 27 years of his life. Seven years. Just take, a, just take a moment. 27 years. Remove 27 years out of your life, what do you have? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Maybe some negative. <laughs> so literally your whole life you've been in this cubicle, you know, thinking about how you want to change a country and yet you have literally no control. And so, and that's a sad thing. Very few people are willing to pay the price for what they say they believe in and what they're willing to fight for. And for me, that's the reason why we don't have that impact, like that changing world, because we only change it according to our own comfort and what we're willing to do or not do. And I think for me, it's really looking back and saying, why do you do what you do? Are you willing to die for what you're trying to do? And if the answer is no, go find something else. Honestly. Because that means when it becomes uh, uncomfortable, you will not fight for it. Yeah? And so, and I, I, I pray, I, I love Kenya. I love the <laughs> patriotic band. But it reminds me of, you know, we are Kenyans, we are the classic complainers. Say Kenyans on Twitter, like it's always a trending hashtag. Um, but we don't do much when it comes to actual action. We will talk about it, but no one will go on the streets and fight for it. No one will, you know, take the time to actually go and speak up. 
And that's the sad thing about the, the country that we live in. We'll talk about corruption, we'll scream about it, but nothing is done. And so for it, for us to really to change the country or the world in this case, um, then we have to first change ourselves and look at, you know, why am I doing what I'm doing? Am I willing to sacrifice for it? But also, with the sacrifice also comes the discipline in terms of doing the right thing all the time. All the time. Because the ends justifies the means. The means justifies the ends. So if you did it in the wrong way, then it will disappear as dust in your hands when you actually achieve it. And I think that's what I realized with my previous experience. And so really taking the time to consider why do I do and am I willing to die for it? But more so as well, what can I do now? Because I think sometimes you don't have to do everything. You don't have to go and stupidly kill yourself. But being able to understand what is in my control and what can I do today? 